Welcome back to the show. While breaking in a new video camera 36 years ago, Ken Kurtz shot some disturbing images in downtown Palm Springs. He captured the 1986 Spring Break Riot, an event which would eventually mark the end of the Valley's Spring Break traditions. Steve Sumrall explains in this edition of Our Desert Past. Within minutes, 15 minutes, it was just a, literally a mob of people completely covering the intersection. Ken Kurtz recalls the events of Saturday, March 29th, 1986, a period which has come to be known as the Palm Springs Spring Break Riot. As far as a riot, it was nothing like we see today or even back then in some cities. It wasn't like that at all. It was just a mob that was getting out of line. But no fires, no burning, all this kind of crap, just wildness. These unexpected acts of wildness ruined what was, at the time, an annual Valley tradition. Party! Party. For Diana! Party! Yeah! Party! Party! Young people, mostly from the West Coast, had been flocking to Palm Springs during spring break from their respective colleges for some time. Miss, perhaps you could tell me why everybody comes to Palm Springs. Gee, this is where all the fun is. And all the girls. <laughs> a premise which was played for laughs in the 1963 film Palm Springs Weekend. But unlike that film, mostly set in various resorts, most of the action could be found downtown. When they weren't hitting the pool, they were cruising the canyon. Palm Canyon Drive was party central. The youth would mingle and find relief from the desert heat by spraying each other with water pistols or throwing water balloons or sometimes just tossing cups of water. Actually, it was just a lot of fun on a beautiful hot afternoon. Ken Kurtz, who at the time was new to the desert by way of northern Wisconsin, was shooting footage on a Super 8 video camera. And I just started walking down the street. And I was on one side um, filming and stuff, and kids are all partying, and they're on motorcycles, and they're throwing water all over each other, and they're on buses, and those double-decker buses. And As Ken continued to walk north down Palm Canyon Drive, he noticed that the crowd was thickening. And there's well over a 1,000 kids piled into this intersection area. And I looked up on the roof of Palm Springs Hotel, and a buddy of mine was up there, not a buddy, but somebody that I'd met, and he was a still photographer. And he hollered down to me, he said, Ken, you got to get up here and see this. So I threw the camera up to him. It was a one-story building, and I climbed up the lattice and jumped on the roof. And I started filming down on the intersection. And now, within minutes, 15 minutes, it was just a, literally a mob of people completely covering the intersection. Of course, more people in the street means that there's less street to drive on. Therefore, all the vehicles were now funneling into one lane and they were obviously slowing down. They were just barely crawling through this, and the kids were mobbing, starting to mob the cars. They were jumping up on top of them. They were shaking the cars. Buses tried to get through, and 50 kids would mob it and start rocking it back and forth. When a pickup truck full of young women drove through the intersection, the situation escalated from disrupting traffic to assault. And the guys piled in there, and now they're, they're ripping clothes off of girls, and they're starting to scream. I, I also noticed in the, in the film Two gals were standing there and they kind of walk into the crowd to see what's going on and the next thing you know they get mobbed and how in the world they got out of there I don't know but they came running out which at the towel wrapped around them and stuff they ripped their clothes off and and then a, a limo came through and some guys jumped up on the hood and they're uh, and then on somewhat onto the windshield and so it's getting wild it would take a strong law enforcement presence to de-escalate the situation. And in the film, when you look at it closely, you'll see some beer bottles flying over into the police crowd and they're putting their hands up and getting hit by them and stuff. And the police were absolutely just pissed. They pulled their batons out and they were smashing them on garbage cans and, and uh, uh, the aluminum uh, street light poles and anything they could do to make noise and sound rough. And it worked because that whole entire crowd scattered. One officer was knocked unconscious after being struck in the head with a beer bottle. Approximately 120 arrests were made. Spring break would continue in Palm Springs for several years after that, but with fewer and fewer visitors, largely due to the efforts of one celebrity mayor. 
It was Sonny Bono's administration that cracked down on the spring breakers by holding them accountable for their actions. New rules were put into effect, and if anyone were to break these rules, they would receive a citation. They made it so miserable for the kids that they didn't want to come back, or they had an open beer in their hand. Boom, they're getting fined if they stepped off the street or off the curb on a red curb and they weren't supposed to be there jaywalking. Since G-strings were creating a distraction for drivers, they were now outlawed. Even the squirt water bottles, which were once sold on Palm Canyon, were now deemed illegal. They did everything they could to go after the kids and stop it. And it worked because they just thought, it's no fun going to Palm Springs anymore. We're, we're out of there. So they just never came back after that. By promoting family events, conventions, and LGBTQ events, the city of Palm Springs has been able to maintain its status as a go-to destination. Meanwhile, the footage shot by Mr. Kurtz remains a reminder of a dark day from our desert past. Steve Sumrall, NBC Palm Springs, News First. Some pretty amazing video there. All right, we're back after this break. Stay with us.